Hello, my name is Richard Cohen. I'm an educator, author, and psychotherapist. I am so excited to share with you my most recent book, Healing Humanity, Time, Touch, and Talk. In Spanish, Sanando la Humanidad, Tiempo, Tacto y Trato. Y Tacto es Contacto Físico. Before I share with you about the book, I'd like to tell you a little about myself. This year, I turned 70 years old. I've been a psychotherapist almost 34 years. I've helped hundreds through counseling, thousands through healing seminars all over the world. People resolved the hurts inside of them, fulfilled their unmet love needs, and achieved their dreams. And the sum total of all this experience is in this new book, and also about my own personal healing journey. I grew up outside of Philadelphia. My father had recently come back from World War II. He was a Marine and he fought at Iwo Jima. It was his platoon that helped put up the US flag. They did not understand about post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD at that time. My father was so full of pain, having seen his comrades die to the left and to the right in front behind, and he and his platoon just kept going forward. My father carried all that pain inside of him. And as a result, he was what I called a rageaholic. So many days he would come home from work and he would just spray us with his anger. And we just ducked. I was the youngest of three children, older brother, sister, and myself. It was an upper class Jewish family in a suburb of Philadelphia. And, you know, we presented a good face, but behind closed doors, it was chaos and pain. When I was about five years old, oh, my uncle came to visit. He was the dad I never had. He shared with me, he listened to me, he played with me. He was the dad I never had, as I just said. And one night, late at night, he crawled into my bed and he began to play with my genitals. And then he taught me to do the same with him. Now, the crazy thing about childhood sexual abuse is that it physiologically feels good because nerve endings don't have any morality, but psychologically it's crazy. And he said to me afterwards, don't tell anyone about it. It's our special secret. So here you go, a professional USA football player, American football, and a five-year-old kid. You better believe I kept my mouth shut. This went on for many, many months. And then he moved out. And I repressed those memories for the next 25 years of my life. I married in my late 20s. And in the beginning, it was great. And then to my oh, shock, I became like my father. I swore I would never be like him. I would come home from work and I would start screaming randomly. And it hurt my wife so badly. And it hurt me because I didn't want to be like my dad in that way. I went into therapy and through my therapy, those memories of sexual abuse began to emerge. And I just raged that hurt and pain that had been bottled up for 25 years just came, you know, writhing out of me. I could have ripped a building down and it took a long time to work through that. And also the hurts I experienced from my dad and from my mom. My mom, I felt used by her. 
that uh, my dad was so scary for her, she would hold on to me. And I felt all of her pain and her hurt. It unintentionally went into me. So in my therapy, I had to work through all of those issues. And there were some incredible men and women who nurtured me to life. Without them, I would be dead today. And then my wife and I were living with our two children at the time. We have three. At that time, they were just two. We were living in this healing community, and my parents came to visit. And with the help of our therapist there, my parents and my wife and I, I shared with them about my former sexual abuse with my uncle. And my father got so outraged and he said, I'm gonna go kill him. And I said, no, dad, that's my job. Thanks, I'll handle it. I appreciate your care. Afterwards, we took them back to their hotel room that night. And I asked my mom, my wife and kids, please give dad and I a few moments to just share alone. And my father was sitting in a chair by the window. I'll, I'll never forget the scene. I can see the chair now and him in it. And I said, dad, I need you to hold me because when I was a kid, you never held me, at least not to my memory. And he shared it didn't happen. He didn't know how because he grew up in military school. So his parents were essentially platoon sergeants. So I sat on his lap. I put one arm here and one arm over me here. And I said, Dad, even though you're in your 70s and I'm in my 30s, I need you to just hold me. And I started to cry and cry uncontrollably. And he doesn't like tears because he has so many repressed emotions inside of him. I said, Dad, just let me get this out. I just want to get out this hurt and pain and feel your love in its place. And he did. He was quiet. And when he was just holding me and I was crying, I saw scenes of my life and what I did for love, all the sexual relations and other things I did. And I said, while I was crying, Dad, I didn't want sex. I wanted your love. I was looking for your love in their arms. And in that moment, I felt his tears just hit my face. I was crying and my father who never cries was crying. And it was the first time in my life that he and I bonded as a father and son. <laughs> I'll never forget it. And I know he never did either. A few years later, I asked my mom to visit us and she came and I said, Mom, I need you to hold me, please. Just hold me. And she did. And I started telling her about hurts from my past and she started speaking and trying to justify. And I said, Mom, stop. I just need you to hear me. And she finally agreed hard for a Jewish mother. <laughs> And I did the same with her. I just started recalling all the things of childhood and all the different scenes were coming up <clears throat> like a movie screen. And I was crying and she was crying. And uh, after I was finished, she didn't need to say a word. I just needed to get it out. And I was always afraid of my mother touching me because of that uncomfortable feeling while I was growing up from her. And I pulled up my shirt. I said, would you just rub my back? And she did. And it was like, I know that sounds so simple for many. For me, it was a miracle. And I internalized her beautiful mother's love. So I reconcile with both my dad and my mom and I had to do it with other figures, my uncle, of course, and others from my childhood. And after I finished or got through it, well, <laughs> we're all a work in progress. I'm, what, 42 years married, 
My wife and I have three amazing adult children. I've helped, you know, hundreds in therapy, thousands through healing seminars in the US, Latin America, uh, Europe, the Middle East, and uh, I'm still growing. We're all wounded and working on ourselves. And that's why, I, why I'm so excited to share with you about the Healing Humanity Time Touch and Talk book. I've had this idea over the past 27 years, and I've been taking notes and writing ideas down. And finally, it is born. And I hope that this will be such a blessing for your life. And I'd like to break down now in the next three videos, the time, the touch, and the talk sections of the book. Stay tuned. Thank you very much.